This is five on your side at four, focused on you. Across the bi-state, cleanup is underway after severe storms swept through our region last night. Not just thunderstorms, multiple tornadoes, including this one in Greene County, Illinois, which was caught on camera. Thanks for being here. I'm Kay Quinn. And I'm Prince Solomon. The storm stretched across the region, leaving major damage. Jefferson County saw a lot of that damage. A wedding venue was hosting a rehearsal dinner when the tornado rolled in. The winds peeled back the roof of the event space there at Brookdale Farms. That's where our Justina Cornell is live for us at four, where Justina wedding is supposed to happen there tomorrow. It's amazing how quickly they've worked today. If you take a look behind me here, that roof is practically fixed. A part of it flew off yesterday evening. Now the building behind me here is called Sila Point and is the largest wedding venue space here on site. This has they have 350 acres. Now multiple crews arrived bright and early this morning to start those repairs. This is after the National Weather Service confirmed damage consistent with an EF1 tornado in this area with gusts up to 110 miles per hour. Now the tornado destroyed the farm storage facility and a wedding rehearsal was going on just a few feet away. The bride's parents tell me the storm quickly came, the door started shaking and they ran to the bathroom for safety. When it ended, the 20 or so party inside realized part of the roof was gone and a back entry door was blown off. The bride's parents tell me, though, they still consider themselves lucky. I was just blessed that, you know, all of us walked away because, I mean, as you can see from that building, if we had been, if that had done that to that, I don't know that. We would have still all been here today, but someone was watching out for us, so. We're told the bride has her eyes set on this venue, and we're told that 99% chance it will happen tomorrow. So we wish the couple the best of luck. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, five on your side. All right, thank you, Justina. The Illinois side of our area also saw serious damage. One of the hardest hit areas, Madison, Illinois. Here is what happened at Worldwide Technology Speedway. The bleachers tossed and twisted by the storms. As a result, the raceway has canceled events this weekend. Megan Kernan will have more on this damage tonight on 5 on Your Side at 5 and 6. And it was a rough commute for many to get home due to those storms last night. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell here now with a look back. Scott? Yeah, we're already getting the storm surveys in. The National Weather Service teams have been out this afternoon, and they've had a lot of damage to look at in multiple areas and that encompasses a large part of our region as well. This is what the storms look like as they rolled into Worldwide Technology Raceway. You saw the damage, 80 mile per hour winds on the estimate with that as that wall of wind rolled in, but that was not from a tornado, that was straight line winds. This is tornado damage down into Jefferson County and this is the location where Justina was just a second ago that you saw. The peak winds on that right at 100 miles per hour with the damage to those buildings just north of Haney Spring. The storm actually touched down a little west of there, but you could track it all the way over into High Ridge and across Highway 30 before it lifted. Almost eight miles, lasting a little less than 10 minutes. That in Jefferson County. Now, Madison County in Illinois, several touchdowns here. We have four confirmed tornado tracks in Madison County. So one right here, just southeast of Pontoon Beach, right off the shores of Horseshoe Lake, did some minor damage there. Lower Marine Road, a small track there, just south of Interstate 70, and then north of Marine from Loose Road over to Clubhouse Road. Then we had another one just around Prairieville, south of Dorsey, south of Prairie Town, I should say. That also caused some damage there. One final tornado to count that we have a track on, and that was here near Cahokia Heights. Went right to, to about 255 and, and then lifted right at that intersection of 157. So at this point, we have at least six tornadoes confirmed. They all happened 5 to 7 p.m. yesterday. All week, rated EF0 with a couple of damage points at EF1. So if a tornado gets rated at EF1, that becomes its highest intensity. Um, but most of the damage was EF0. Quick spin-ups, all of them lasting less than 10 minutes. No injuries, no deaths. That's the good news that we have. Everything that's out there, the damage that you've seen, it can all be fixed. And in many cases, as you're seeing already from Christina's report, they're doing that pretty quickly at this point today, Kay. All right, yes, they are. We'll check in on the weekend forecast in just a moment. For more information on yesterday's storms, text the word TORNADO to 314-425-5355.
We now know the man killed in a triple shooting on the Del Mar Loop early Thursday. Police tell us a man shot Cortez Jackson outside of the pinup bowl. Two women were also shot. They're being treated at a hospital now. Their injuries are serious. Police are still looking for the shooter. If you know anything, call police or stay anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. Twelve jurors and six alternates have been selected in the Trump hush money trial, but a scary situation unfolded outside the New York courthouse. A man is in critical condition after lighting himself on fire outside the building where the Trump criminal trial was taking place. Firefighters put out the flames. That man was rushed to a hospital. Three police officers and one court officer also suffered minor injuries. The U.S. House is considering a series of foreign aid bills, and they do not include compensation for victims of radi radiation. That's despite efforts from Representative Ann Wagner. She added the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act to one of the foreign aid bills, but it did not make it out of committee. Her office shared this statement with us. It's deeply regrettable. The Rules Committee refused to accept 312 out of 319 amendments, including Representative Wagner's. The Congresswoman will continue to fight and work to find other avenues in the House to get RECA authorized and expanded. RECA is a program that provides compensation to people who got sick by the government's radioactive waste. In the past, the program did not include Missouri. An expanded version of that proposal passed in the Senate, but last month it met hurdles in the House. RECA is set to expire come June. Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft is running in the GOP primary for governor, and yesterday he earned a major endorsement. The St. Louis Ethical Society of Police says it's endorsing Ashcroft for governor. The Secretary of State told political editor Mark Maxwell it's largely due to his support of a state takeover of the city police department. The local government is not doing the, their own responsibility. It's just like the border. When the federal government is not doing its job to enforce the law at the border, states have to step in and do it. When St. Louis City is not doing its job to make sure that the people of this state and the city don't have to live in fear, then it's incumbent upon the state to step in. Catch more of Mark's interview with Secretary Ashcroft on this week's episode of The Record. It airs Sunday night right after Sports Plus. The state of Illinois budgeting for thousands of new students. How an influx of migrants is shaping the education budget. And improving your drive. What MoDOT is promising commuters who use I-70 West of St. Louis. Taylor Swift's new album is out the way it's already breaking records.